How y'all doing? What's up? <laughs> Before I begin, I have one small disclaimer. I'm black, y'all. <laughs> now, this isn't completely by choice. I'm sure my parents had a little something to do with that. But my black identity is by design. It's been much debate in this country over what to call black people over the past few hundred years. But when I say black, I'm typically referencing people of African descent living in America or African Americans. Black became a term that we used during the black liberation movement of the 1970s as a way to sort of rebrand ourselves in the national imagination. So that brings me to another point I want to talk to you tonight which about, which is branding, and where these two concepts start to intersect. Brand is not a new concept that we've heard. Uh, many people uh, know what that means or think they know what it means, but it's not a new concept. It dates actually back centuries when cattle raisers would brand their cattle as a way to signify ownership in case they grazed off land. But over time, our understanding of brand grew. We now know that branding is not just a logo or a symbol. It is the sum of many parts coming together around a product, a service, and in some cases, people. In my day job, I run a brand and design agencies where I help customers and clients build powerfully conscious brand identities, campaigns, and strategies. In these workshops that I teach on occasion in classes, I asked the participants to give me their gut reaction to a series of popular logos that I might flash on the screen. Sometimes I use images or words. You, as you can imagine, the reactions vary from image to image. Um, but the idea here is to get them to try to correlate what they're seeing on the screen with the images that come to mind and the feeling it evokes in our bodies. I won't tell you what the reactions are when I show the Trump logo. I'll let you. Imagine that for yourself. <laughs> but brands spend billions of dollars to impart meaning into these symbols and images we see every day. A man by the name of Simon Sinek wrote a book, and in it he says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. These brands understand on a very intrinsic level human beings need to connect to meaning, and purpose. It's the reason that Coca-Cola wants you to believe that if they cease to exist tomorrow, the world will be a less happy place. Or Nike wants you to believe that champions wear their shoes. If we begin to connect this understanding of brand beyond just the marks or the images we see, we see that they are telling us something different. Now, as a quick lesson, we'll do a quick case study. If you ask 10 different designers, what brand means or the elements of brand, they'll probably tell you about seven to eight different things, right? But for the purpose of this conversation, we'll break it down into four parts. One is the iconography, the logo, the identity, which most people connect to branding. The second part is the product itself. It's the thing that you hold in your hands, the touch, the smell, the taste. The next part is the promotion or the collateral, the content that's created around this product. And the final part is the thing that really is connecting to branding. It's the thing that we feel. It's how these products make the, us feel. If we use Nike as an example, we can start to see how these parts start to come together to form what we understand as branding. But it's important to note that there are people behind these brands. There are people crafting these messages. There are people who are affected by what these messages say. We also know in America that products aren't the only thing that is branded. What happens when we start to connect this idea of branding to people, when we start to identify people in the same way that we identify brands? Now, this is usually the point in a talk like this I might ask you to close your eyes and tell me what you think when you hear the term black or blackness, but I ain't gonna do that tonight. <laughs> One, because we don't have time to hear all your answers, and two, I'm not sure I'm ready to hear y'all's answers. <laughs> but I hope I'm beginning to paint a picture for you that the power of branding and these tools are very powerful 
and they affect and impact how we feel about ourselves and how we connect to other people. We can see how brands have brought people together around causes or, and, and mission and activism. And so when these ideas start to create movement, we can see the power in them. We can also see how powerful they are when the wrong message is sent about people and how this impacts each and every one of us when we start to identify people according to belief. Growing up in Cleveland, my experience was very black. <laughs> we'll call Cleveland a black utopia for now. <laughs> but my experience contrasted a lot of what I saw on TV. It don't get much blacker than that, y'all. <laughs> The place I grew up, I was surrounded by black people. We can call it the hood. And yes, it was joy and pain and struggle and oppression and poverty, but my experience also contrasted a lot of the things that I saw in media. Right, yes, I knew that there was things that were troubling about where I lived, but I also had a beautiful experience. And this set a foundation for a young kid who loved art to think and believe that he could pursue a career in design. And so I traveled distances unknown, far, far away to a city called Columbus to pursue a career in art and design. It was here I learned the power of images and design. It was here I realized everything is by design. But it was here I was also having an experience that I hadn't experienced before, which is I started to feel alienated. I, far, I started to feel that my contribution to this space was not accepted. I wanted to know why people's interaction with me started to change, why I was getting pulled over in my first week here. And in the second week here, I got pulled over. As my understanding of design grew, so did my curiosity for people's ideas surrounding blackness and ultimately impacted how they dealt with me. This became my design problem. I began this journey of self-discovery, and in my journey, I came across a book by advertising legend Tom Burrell, one of my heroes. And he started an agency in Chicago called Burrell Communications in the 70s with the intent of putting positive black images of people, black people in media. In his book, Brainwash, Challenging the Myth of Black Inferiority, he proclaims, as a marketing professional who respects and admires brilliantly conceived and deftly executed propaganda, I eventually recognized that one of the greatest propaganda campaigns of all time was the masterful marketing of the myth of black inferiority to justify slavery within a democracy. Quite frankly, our forefathers designed a brand of black people to dehumanize them and make them commodity to sell. This was the advent of what we know today as racism. It also propped it up white supremacy. This infiltrated every part of our society from law to politics to religion to science and arts and entertainment. Arts and entertainment became probably one of the most powerful perpetrators of this brand of blackness that we see in these pictures. A man by the name of Thomas Dartmouth Rice created a character called Jim Crow, where he painted his face in black cock to mimic a black man he heard humming a tune. This became one of the first forms of American popular culture. It had global impact. It also gave way and solidified white supremacy in our society. This was a problem that America was having. Minstrelsy gave white ruling class a way to escape the lived realities of pe black people's experiences in this country. We can see the effects of this branding even throughout today. But my discovery also led me down a path of finding other things. So we understand America had a brand problem that it was not recognizing. And that was because the audience for that brand of blackness were white folk. But it had a contradiction. The ideals and values that it promoted were contrasted by its actions and practices. So when you have a brand problem, you rebrand, you change the corporate image. And so I'm proud to say that my discovery didn't just lead me to a path of discovering the pain and struggle that my ancestors went through, but it led me down a path of finding out the beauty and the resistance in the rebrand of blackness for ourselves by ourselves. Remember Jim Crow that I talked about where we put him to death 
<laughs> quite literally. But we can see this thread of black people redefining, reimagining, and rebranding what blackness meant to us, dating all the way back from the inception of this country. We can t trace that thread from slavery on up to the New Negro Movement, or what some might call the Harlem Renaissance, through to the Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement, the Black Arts Movement. But one of the most uh, salient points I wanted to make tonight is we saw that right here in Columbus, right down the street in the Alpha Hospital where Dr. Methis saw patients, for sometimes for chickens, who didn't have enough money to pay. Black people here were self-determined. One of the most visible examples of what we might call modern day branding was the Black Panther. I discovered the artwork of Emory Douglas, and this let me fall in love with the aesthetic that the Black Panthers had. If we case study what the Black Panthers did, we can align this with some of the tenants that major corporations have used to push products on you. But they use these tenants because they understood the power of connecting imagery with meaning and purpose not for capitalist profit, but for movement and liberation and freedom. We can see their uh, aesthetic and their influence impacted even up until today. That is, and the government did try to rebrand them, y'all, but they weren't successful. I got a chance to meet Emory Douglas a few years ago and had a conversation with him where he explained to me the power of imagery and it was very intentional. They knew that a portion of our community and population were illiterate. And so they understood that having next to the academic essays images that would send the message that they needed to hear and get the point across. This had profound impact on me. And it let me know that I am here by design, that it was not a mistake that I am standing in front of you today, that you are here, that somebody in my past desired and figured out that the brand of blackness that was being portrayed at large was not the reality that we wanted to live. Black people against overwhelming odds have always never widely accepted these tropes and stereotypes about ourselves. I am here by design. And we can see the impact of black culture and black people throughout the globe. We have touched every part of this fabric. I also realize that black people have influenced America since America's inception. There is no America without black people. We have touched politics, athletics, entertainment, science, and so many more spaces. Blackness was a brand that they created to, for our demise, but we understood that we are not a brand, we are people. At the root of this is human beings. And so, remember when I told you that I wouldn't tell you or make you close your eyes and think what comes to mind when I use the term black? Well, I didn't tell the whole truth. I do want you to think about these things. Where did these ideas come from? But not just around blackness. What happens when you think white or gay, straight, old, young, disabled? Where did these ideas come from? How have you branded identity on someone? Is it based off your interaction with them or something you might have saw or read? We have an opportunity in this country to build engagements that are rely less on tropes and stereotypes and brands and more on engagement, community, and acceptance. We have the opportunity to tell our own stories. So my challenge to you today is when you go out and you hear these terms, think about how you have been impacted by the branding of something, the branding of a person. We all have a role to play our future is bright, and we get to create it. Our futures aren't a place where we are going. They are a place we get to create. And I'm happy to stand before you to say I'm taking that journey of resistance with you against this unfortunate travesty that still exists today as it pertains to this brand of blackness that was created hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We have the opportunity to create the future we want to see. Thank you.